Today I want to go over a few things that I have learned in the two years that I have been raising alpacas. Um, if I would have known a little bit more before I got started, I probably would have had a better two years. But I've been learning as I go and I've made a few mistakes, but I've also learned a lot from them. Um, the first thing that you need to know before you get alpacas is that they are not like other livestock that you've raised. If you've raised goats and pigs and sheep and cows and dogs and cats and any, you know, most other kinds of animals, breeding those animals is not the same as breeding alpacas. Alpacas have to be kept separate, the males from the females, or the males will try to breed even if the females are already bred. And that's that's not generally the way it works with almost every other kind of animal that I've had to deal with. So that was a big surprise for me. I didn't know that when I very first got my, my first eight alpacas. Two of them were male. And they had been kept together. The way that they deal with each other in nature is usually there's one or two um, dominant males that run with the females but they'll chase off any other males and the males that I mean nature gives you like 50 50 usually half females half males so the males that don't have a herd of females they usually live very calmly and peacefully together away from the females and so to be able to manage the males you have to keep them far away from the females, not just a few feet away from the females and not just in a different fence. I mean that's probably the worst thing is if they share a fence line because then um, they're constantly trying to get over there and with the male that we've had problems with the more reading and studying that I've done I have realized that I have made so many mistakes with him my husband noticed um, the other day that we have one of our fences that's kind of crooked and it's because he had been living in the pasture with our cow that was right next to our girl pen and he's leaned on that fence so much that it started to to tip just a little bit I mean it's not it's not bad and I was thinking maybe I should put him in there and have it, him push it the other way <laughs> like switch up their pens but um, I just realized there's been a lot of mistakes I have made with him and he's kind of ornery and I feel like a lot of it is my fault but I also feel that a lot of it is fixable and so what I have done with him um, I have him now in with the boys and when we first put him in there then he just tried to beat the crap out of everybody he was very very dominant didn't want anyone to get near the gate when he was with the females I actually had him in the pen with the females because he um, wasn't one to, to force them down and try to mate. He, he, that wasn't the, the way he reacted. I've seen males do that. That's how my younger males are that I took out when I very first got my herd. But he didn't do that. What he wanted to do is guard the gate. He wanted to keep the other male alpacas out of the, out of the pen that had the girls in it. So what I've done to try to help him with his manners and help him become, become more integrated into the rest of my herd, the male half of my herd, is I have put up a barrier. Um, I put up some horse panels, which we had from our other property. We just brought them over when we moved and haven't had a use for them until now. But I put those up kind of in a semicircle around the gate. First I moved them into a different pasture that I, it was possible to do this with. He was in a pasture that had a lot more fence line that was exposed to other animals. But where I have them now, they're kind of back in a corner. And I put a semicircle around where the gate is so that he can't go and card that gate. He can't just stand there and... and keep the other animals away from the water. Unfortunately that's where my water tank was as well. So um, I went out there and made some alterations in how their pen is set up and I'm hoping it's going to help because tomorrow I'm going to bring in another male. And my original plan was to castrate this male because I'd seen YouTube videos and read things that said if you have a, an aggressive male 
and um, don't castrate him, then your family's in danger. And he, if he does pass on traits, he'll pass on this aggressiveness. But at reading about normal behavior, I can't see that he's doing anything that isn't completely normal considering the positions that I put him in. So we're going to hold off on that. Um, I have another video that I made that shows that he doesn't appear to have any testicles. But as I've been shopping for other alpaca males to replace him as my stud, I noticed some of them have very little back there too and they're proven. And so I'm hoping that in the future I'll be able to use him as a breeder. But at the moment, what I need to concentrate on is keeping him from injuring my other alpaca males. And I think I'm on the right track. I think I'm working toward this correctly. What I'll probably do with this little semicircle that I've blocked off is I will put my new male in that section so that he's separated from my herd. Just quarantine him for a little while and let them get used to each other and then I don't know what's going to happen when I put them in together, but I guess I'll have to wait and see. I can always put Vesuvio back in with the cow, which he won't like. He and the cow got along just fine until she had her calf, and I think he must have acted aggressively toward the calf, but now she can't stand him. Like, she'll chase him away from his food, and she's just mean as all get out to him. And she's a really nice cow, so that's kind of, kind of a change for her. But... The way our pasture is set up, we have it divided into four one-acre sections. And so there's plenty of room for, for any kind of animal to escape others in that big of an area. So if an animal is acting a little bit aggressively toward another one, then there's, there's places to run. At least three out of four of them have trees that are obstacles that they can get behind and, you know, feel like they, they can be safe. But I'm going to show you what I've done out there. Okay, what I have going on here is I am putting up a fence in my alpaca pasture. This is where I've moved my boy alpacas to. And I've done that because tomorrow I'm going to be getting a new stud. I have Vesuvio who's out here in this far field, a far part of this field all by himself because he and my other boys don't get along very well. And then over here I have these three that kind of stick together. But what I'm concerned about, they've gotten so they aren't chasing and fighting at the moment. What I'm concerned about is when I bring this other boy, <clears throat> when I bring this other boy in tomorrow, I'm afraid he's going to have a hard time. So I've put up these panels to make a smaller pen here in the front and this is going to do two things it's going to keep them farther from my girls which are over here but another thing is these little boys over here are very pettable and very tame and when I have this little section sectioned off I'll be able to move them into here when my grandkids are here and they'll be able to pet the alpacas and do things like they used to do at our other farm back when we didn't have Vesuvio in with them. They'll be able to touch them and, and feed them by hand. I've got Vesuvio up here seeing what I'm doing. I'm draining out the water. That's right behind him. So he's always got to check things out. And get... But Vesuvio is a very brave alpaca. One thing about him, he's very easy to to um, lead anywhere. He's not afraid. And so when we lived at our old house, then I would a lot of times take him for walks down the road. And one of my neighbors had little grandkids staying with her one day and she came and um, drove up right next to us and her little grandkids all had their hands outside of the car windows and were petting him and he was just fine with it. That would freak out most alpacas but not him. So this is where I decided to put the water. It's kind of in a location that 
alpacas can come from any direction and be able to run away. I was kind of relieved when I put it out here because the this little group over here, I was afraid Vesuvio had been keeping them from the water. And they walked over here and looked at it and didn't even take a drink. So they've been getting plenty to drink. We just don't want anybody going without what they need. I hope you've liked this video and learned a little bit more about alpaca management. And if you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.